Okay, hello friends. Uh, good day to you. God bless you and welcome to this family Bible study. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, it was Genesis or excuse me, Exodus chapter 4 and just a refresher. Um, uh, God was telling Moses um, the signs that he would do and giving Moses an example of the signs that he would do uh, when he sent him to deliver the children of Israel um, out of Egypt and had sent Moses before Pharaoh. And the first example of a sign was Moses had a rod in his hand and when he threw it down it became a serpent and Moses fled from before it, probably terrified of, of that sight. Um, just like you or I would probably be terrified of that as well. The second um, example uh, the sign that God gave to Moses was um, Moses. God told Moses to put his hand in his bosom and um, it became leprous which means wh white as snow and then God told Moses to put it back in his bosom and it was turned back to um, his regular hand, his regular flesh with no leprosy. Uh, the leprosy was gone and then God said that if uh, they didn't, the children of Israel um, well, would not believe those two signs that Moses was to take um, of the water of the river and pour it upon dry land and it would become blood. And that was even going to be a third witness. And Moses, at this time, being learned uh, in all the Egyptian wisdom and uh, mighty in words and deeds of Egyptian words being uh, man's words, was not um, very confident in himself and didn't feel equipped to uh, take on this task that that God was was giving him and even going so far as to um, Ask the Lord if he had anyone else to send uh, which God wasn't very happy about that, but God uh, said uh, what about your uh, brother Aaron isn't he a Levite and Said that Aaron was a good speaker. So God uh, made Moses uh, or made Aaron a spokesman, or which means uh, thy thy prophet. And the instructions were that God was to God was going to communicate with Moses and tell Moses what to tell Aaron to speak unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh. And <clears throat> at the uh, or in the middle of chapter four, um, God even sought to kill Moses. And Zipporah uh, took care of that by uh, circumcising one of their sons, uh, causing the Lord to let Moses go. And then at the end of chapter 4, uh, Moses and Aaron gathered all, uh, together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had commanded uh, them to speak, or the Lord had spoken to Moses. And Moses told Aaron to say... And at the end of chapter 31, it says that they believed. And uh, when they figured out, the children of Israel, that God had looked upon their afflictions or heard their cries out to him, they uh, bowed down their heads and worshipped him. Um, we're going to pick it up today in Exodus chapter 5. Um, God, I pray that you open eyes, open ears this day, Father. Um, let us receive the wisdom that you would have us receive from your word today and the message you would have us receive, Father. Um, and if anything I say be of God, uh, I pray that you receive it. And if anything I say be not of God, I pray that you do not receive it. All right, uh, Exodus chapter 5, word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's precious name, verse 1. And it reads, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, who is Yahweh, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Question. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And this, of course, God had told Moses that this would happen, that he would harden Pharaoh's heart, which means he would uh, cause to suffer uh, the children of Israel, that Pharaoh would not let them go. 
initially. Verse 3, And they said, Moses and Aaron, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with the pestilence or with the sword. This word, uh, pestilence, in the Hebrew is a word in your Strong's Concordance, Hebrew word 1698, and it's deber, and it means a plague. And this uh, word, the sword, is Hebrew word 2717, and it's kareb, and it means drought. Verse 4. And the king of Egypt, as being Pharaoh, said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works question, get you unto your burdens? And this, um, let, wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works means, um, why do you hinder the people from your work, from their work? Um, get you unto your burdens, which means get back to work. Verse 5. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and ye make them and ye make them rest from their burdens. He's saying, basically he's saying, now that you've multiplied and you've got so many people here working, uh, you you've got some that are are don't have anything to do. And verse six. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, and the taskmasters are the ones who Pharaoh um, set to make sure that the tasks are carried out of making the brick and gathering the straw and making the brick, or initially uh, making bricks without having to gather straw. That's about to change. And this officers, these are the ones um, like the bookkeepers, or they keep count of how much uh, production is is being done completed verse 7 ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore let them go and gather straw for themselves and this word straw is is an Egyptian word tebin and it's it's a word used for chopped straw or chaff verse 8 and the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, that means and the number of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Pharaoh saying, uh, Now you're going to have to keep making the same quota of bricks that you did before, but you're going to have to go gather your own straw now. Because you guys are idle, and that's the only reason you want to go out into the wilderness is because you got time to lean. So basically, Pharaoh's saying, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean, if, if you will, figure of speech. Verse 9. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Now, this, this vain words... Um, you want to you want to be real careful when uh, you're receiving a message from God, and you want to call it vain words. Um, this is not going to turn out too good for Pharaoh, and he's probably going to regret that he ever said this. Um, and this vain words, this is like man's estimate of of divine revelation. And of course, man doesn't understand spiritual things. Uh, only the spirit can understand spiritual things. And, of course, God is causing Pharaoh to harden his heart uh, to bring to pass the, the miracles that he will and to bring the children out of Israel. Verse 10. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Verse 11. Go ye. Get you straw where you can find it. Ye not yet not aught yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. 
he's saying now you're gonna have to go gather straw too and you're still gonna have to make make the same number of bricks as you did before verse 12 so the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw and this word stubble in the Hebrew is gash and it it is uh, reeds verse 13 and the taskmasters hasted them they hurried them saying fulfill your works your daily tasks as when there was straw they rode them really hard verse 14 and the officers of the children of Israel which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them were beaten and demanded wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in the making of brick both yesterday and and today as heretofore. Why are you guys not meeting your quota as heretofore, as before? And they're taking a beating for it. Verse 15. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? Question. Verse 16. There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say unto us, Make brick, and behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. They're pleading their, their case to Pharaoh. Verse 17, But he said, Ye are idle, ye are idle, twice for emphasis. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord, being Yahweh verse 18 go therefore now and work for there shall no straw be given you yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks Pharaoh's not hearing it uh, he has no sympathy on the children of Israel and of course remember the Lord said that he would cause this to happen and this is very evidence of Pharaoh's heart having been hardened by the Lord verse 19 and the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case, or they were dealing with an evil person in Pharaoh. After it was said, "Ye shall not diminish aught from your bricks of, from your bricks of your daily task," and they could tell right away. Okay, he's not he's not gonna he's not gonna give in at all. Verse twenty, <clears throat> he meaning Pharaoh. And they met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. This be the officers coming forth from Pharaoh after they had been beaten and then went and pleaded with him. Verse 21, And they said unto them, the officers said unto Moses and Aaron, The Lord look upon you and judge, because ye have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And this, uh, ye have made our savor to be aboard in the eyes of Pharaoh, means, uh, ye, in the Hebrew, it means you have made our smell to stink in the eyes of Pharaoh. Verse 22. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, being Yahweh, wherefore, or actually this is changed to uh, Adonai in the ancient text being El Shaddai. Wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Question. Why is it that thou hast sent me? Question. And uh, Moses uh, is already kind of forgetting that God told him that he would harden Pharaoh's heart. And man is forgetful. Um, and of course Moses, he's right at the time where he's just now learning this wisdom of God. And so he's not, he's not fully caught on yet. Verse 23, For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Okay. And so Moses is communicating with God here. He's, he's kind of, he's learning. Um, and so that's going to conclude uh, chapter 5 and today's lecture. Um, I really do love you guys because y'all love studying God's word with me chapter by chapter and verse by verse 
and figuring out his thoughts, his emotions, and the plan of the day, and learning about salvation and the Lord Jesus Christ and repentance. Um, repentance being the most beautiful thing in Christianity. Um, that's because, you know, when you sin in this world, and we're all flesh, we all fall short of the glory of God, and when we sin in this world, it kind of manifests itself in a spiritual weight on top of your shoulders and uh, the beauty of Christianity is repentance and that Christ paid for our sin uh, he was made our sin on that cross and he paid a terrible price uh, to pay for that sin should we believe on his name and accept the gift of salvation that he's given us and when you do that all that sin um, you know, it was written down in the book of life. God, God's always keeping keeping notes and keeping the, all those sins wrote down. And then whenever you repent, he just takes the blotter and he just blots them out. And you have a totally fresh, clean slate. And he forgives you. And how awesome is that? Because uh, we're definitely in need of that forgiveness. I know I am on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, it's a good thing to... Uh, dig in God's word for truth because you're going to find it there every single time and the word of God is pregnant I mean if you can read it 50 or 100 times and you're going to end up learning something new every single time you open that the word of God and uh, it's really an amazing thing and thank God what a loving father that we have for him to send his word unto us so we can know him um, alright don't miss the next lecture uh, love you guys thanks for watching